Greetings, friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here with a little bit of bad news. Oh, no. Yep, so it's raining outside, and I got a leak in my window right there. We also picked up a stray cat. It's a little kitty cat. Mojo likes him. He likes Mojo. But this cat here, deciding deciding whether or not he let, they want to get along. But he's a cute little guy. Hmm. He's a cute little guy. Yeah. Before we get started here, I just wanted to um, um, put on a little warm clothes. It's a little bit chilly in here. Fire is... Uh, started uh, but i did want to point out something really quick see these loose wires here i hot glued them in but they came undued unglued so i'm going to re-hot glue those wires and then we'll get started One thing I always do is put a piece of paper underneath your glue gun and set it down so that it sticks to the paper, not to anything else. All right, so you got all sorts of resonators to choose from here. This one's wood. I think this is more like a cover. Pretty. Copper. Pounded copper. Hmm. I actually know somebody who has a bunch of scrap copper. I wonder if he can hammer me one one of these things. Same thing, but tin or aluminum, I guess. Oh, here's that. It looks like this might go goes with this. Ooh, Jasmine. What's that? Dirty. Look at there's even leaves on it from outside. This is just a paint can lid. It actually has the color of the paint. Oh, I have two of these guys. I'm mean, actually got the paint on the back. And here's actually a brand new one of these guys. It's one of these guys, but brand new. And there's a pounded one. This looks like it was was a paint can, but uh, looks like it got spun. I think I'm gonna opt for this guy here. This is the the clean one the reflective one because it was raining outside i had to bring my uh, router inside so i could route it inside so i made a big old huge dust mess over there but whatever here's the neck now i was in the store the last couple of days and i was checking out some of the hardwoods like the oak and the maple and um what was the other one that was another one walnut and i looked at every board and every board was crooked i was just like just looking for one straight piece like it's like oh no it's just like every one of those suckers was bent 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 and some of them were like severe bends like eh, like elbows and i'm like thinking who's gonna buy it no one's gonna buy these things um thank god i have a whole bunch of Perfectly, perfectly, perfectly straight pieces of wood. Now this one here is a piece of poplar. And I was looking at the back here and it still has the sticker from when I bought it. And it says right there in the bottom, made in the USA. So I'm leaving this. I'm going to try my best to leave that sticker on throughout this build. Wish me luck. So here's a stray cat. It's probably, I'm guessing, maybe 10 weeks old. She is a she. According to physics, according to science, Mojo, Mojo likes the cat. Come here, Mojo, come here, come here, come here, come here. say hi to the cat, hi cat. He's, they're good friends. Um, but my mom calls this one here a, a tortoise shell. It's like a calico, it's like feet or like got paint on it, you know. So, his face is actually kind of cool. 
What do you think, Mojo? You wanna play catch? Huh? Come here, come here, Mojo. Come here. Wanna play catch? Get the cat. Get that cat. Mojo's a gentleman. He does. He won't hurt anybody. He does like to play, but he's very gentle when he plays. Got one of those larger boxes. In fact, this box is um, eleven inches by eight and a half by about an inch and three quarters ish so i just took the paint can traced it on there made sure it was center of course i cut off the top so it could fit on the saw and then just to trace it out drilled a hole and i used my little dremel pop a hole in that thing and i'm telling you right off the bat if i just squeeze this box together you can hear it That's why they call it a resonator. Next, cut out the back angle piece. And then I also set the height of the blade to be this high. Then I took off all this just by running it back and forth over the, the blade just to whittle that guy down. Now what I wanna do is I wanna whittle it even further Right here, right here, I measured where this um, can's gonna fit on there. And um, actually this way, you can see those lines kind of match up there. So now I'm gonna dig it out so that that resonator can um, freely vibrate. So you can see this thing is shaping up nicely. So there's three layers to this piece here. There's the shelf right here that the um, this the wooden part is going to sit on. And then there's this trough or trench, whatever you want to. Also, so that the paint can can freely vibrate. Um, and then of course it's attaching back here. Now you can see where the saddle needs to go. So the saddle needs to go probably about an inch into the thing, which means what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my piezo right underneath where the edge of the can touches. So, so if you can see the finger, my finger, where it is underneath like kind of right in the middle of the edge. Does that make sense? That's, I think, is that that way I'll get the, the support of the wood, but the resonance of this will get transferred into the piezo. Now we're over here on the back bench, and this is the Dremel, you see Dremel? Yeah, Dremel, I don't know what you call this, um, jigsaw, circular, um, reciprocating saw. Yeah, up and down kind. The nice thing about this is that you can drill a hole and put the blade through the hole and um, cut out patterns. Ah, sometimes it's a little bit challenging to get it in there. That's why you gotta have your reading glasses on. All right, here we go. Get the bottom in, get the top in. Okay. Pull it tight. Turn on the vacuum.
Ta da! Pick up. Oh, thingy, thingy. One more trough. And that is for the pickup. Boom, boom, boom. So we cut that in there. Pickup. What's going to be unique about this build is I'm only going to sand it. After I routed it, I actually like the way all these clean lines look with here and here. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm just gonna sand this thing smooth, 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 smooth. This cat found Mojo's dog bone. This is my favorite part of the build where I get a piece of, in this case here, I got poplar. Make sure that the neck width is correct. And then I double side sticky tape my fretting slot template to it. And then using the Mighty Might, four inch Mighty Might table saw with a 0 0.023 kerf, I adjust the height to be exactly deep enough this little sled to go back and forth and then I just cut cut the grooves here At the end of the day, you're left with perfect fret slots. Cigar box guitar, glue it, take two. I am just out, just about out of wood glue. Just enough to glue the um, fretboard. to the neck. If there's everything, anything I'm generous on, it's glue, because you can always wipe off the extra, right? You can't put it on after the fact. This is what you call glue fingers. You wouldn't want to be playing your instrument with glue on your fingers like that. That's just not good. Hey, do you hear that? Or what? Nothing. All right, wipe, wipe off my finger. I already verified that these guys were all straight and perfectly flat to each other. You know what? I lost a bunch of clamps in the move. Dang it. A bunch of my metal C-clamps. There's a box that I still need to open that has all my metal C-clamps in it. And it's like, where the heck is it? Lost. So all I got are these kind of clamps, which um, if you build guitar necks, you know these are not the greatest. And the reason being is because when you when you squeeze them, uh, when you when you squeeze it like this, one of the one it wants to go one way or the other. It's like it's really hard to get it like perfectly up and down with these things here. So you got to constantly play with them when you're using these guys. But unfortunately, that is all I have to work with at the moment. Yeah.
You got a bunch of little tiny, tiny guys. That ain't gonna do me no good. So what I do is I just feel, this is all by feel. First off, I, I get these guys to be up and down, flat. Sometimes, depending on the wood, I'll put a, a barrier so I don't get the clamp, but I'm not gonna be using much force and these guys really aren't that strong, so. And with my index finger and my thumb, I just make sure that, that when, I, when I release the clamp, that the fretboard stays in parallel with the neck. And I could tell it didn't, so I'm gonna loose it again and micro adjust. Yep, see this isn't, isn't working. Okay, there it is. And so what I had to do is kind of loosen the top and then twist it down so that it kind of pushed it that way just a little bit. And again, I'm feeling with my index finger and my thumb just to ensure. Uh, the other thing you gotta ensure is that it doesn't shift in this axis here. And it did just a little bit, so I'm just gonna push it down just a, just a hair. And you got time before the glue sets up. And I'm constantly wiping, constantly wiping the glue. Um, and again, I'm just keeping my finger here to make sure it doesn't shift. And then I just move down or up whatever you want to call it, and do the same exact thing. Make sure that the, these two lines are parallel with each other. And then using your index finger and your thumb, make sure it doesn't shift, and it did. So whenever it shifts, you just relax it and then tilt it in the direction that it shifted and that'll bring it back. I'll try that. And I go again, go back and every time you, you put a clamp on, you get a, another um, squish, you get more glue coming out. So always go back and double check, double check, double check every time. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so I got three clamps on there, all kind of strategically in the on the end, middle. And again, I'm just this is just my rough, rough alignment and cleanup. Can't get in here with the, with the towel, so I just use my finger in here. And then wipe it off from my finger under here. You wipe it and then you wait another like 15 seconds and more comes out. You wait another 15 seconds, more comes out. You gotta stay on top of it. Now, here's the heel. I need a bigger, so I use this guy. It's kind of like my biggest one I got. And I, just, I don't put a whole lot of pressure on it, just enough to like one, barely one click, if that. It's really just to hold it in place because it's pretty much straight already. You don't need to grill it, grill it. But you do want to feel it and make sure that it's still in alignment all the way up and down the neck. Go back, double check. Double, triple, quadruple check. And again, wipe everything off. This, to be honest with you, this is probably the, the most, I don't want to say painstaking, but because you got glue on there, kind of time is of the essence and you don't want it to be shoddy because if glue dries, ah, you got to go back and file it and sand it. And it's best to deal with it when it's wet. Oh, you might. Look at the backside here. Today you can't recycle that glue, huh? Okay, double check, double check, double check. Yep, we're good, 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 good. I'm bleeding yellow blood. After about 10 minutes, then what I do is I just verify that the neck is straight on all axes. Okay, 
continue to wipe excess glue if necessary but i pretty much got got it to where it's not stopped oozing the glue out now but keep it keep it wiped none, nonetheless you can even hit it with a damn cloth now the, uh, the point is is that if you're going to take the fret the fretboard off because you screwed up say say you just now notice oh you got it on backwards you got the fat frets over here and the skinny frets over here which i've done before now is the time to take it off while the glue is still semi-wet because once this thing dries up you're pretty much committed so set it Now we're gonna sand that guy smooth. Well, I figured out why the window's leaking in the rain. Check this out. pitch black night but let's see here if i can turn this around here's the window from the outside and you can see that this little lip is dripping into the top of the channel over the window so of course it's gonna leak duh all right guys that's it for this video be sure to tune into the next video to see how this thing turns out it's past my bedtime what about you mojo what about you cat hmm? all right man we'll see you guys in the next video cheers